All right, so um, yeah, talking about tips to condense and improve your PowerFX code. So you're probably thinking, who the FX is this guy? And um, unfortunately, we don't have a co-pilot to explain that just yet. My name is Charles Sexton. Um, I share my name with Charles Lamana, and also, of course, King Charles, the Spaniel. Um, I'm a senior Power Platform developer, very passionate about Power Apps, as you can probably tell. Um, I'll be speaking at the European Power Platform Conference next month in Brussels, um, which was mentioned earlier. Um, on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see a, snip, a screenshot from my blog. Um, there's a QR code if you want to go to it. I talk a lot about Power Apps, and the QR code on the left is to connect with me on LinkedIn. So feel free to do that. So what we're going to do now is um, just go straight into the demo and talk about PowerFX tips. So um, yeah, first things first, this is sort of James Bond themed. Um, it just happened by chance. I'm not a particularly huge James Bond fan, but we'll just roll with it. It's quite fun. Um, so the first thing that we're going to talk about is to do with returning Booleans. So in your properties in Power Apps, you're often setting things like the visibility of controls. And you might have some kind of condition in there, and you might need to return a Boolean, a true or a false. And what I've seen a lot of the time is people actually returning true or returning false. So if our text matches, we return true, we've got visibility. If it doesn't, then it's false. But we don't actually need to return true or false because we just need the result of the condition to be, to be there, essentially. So all we have to do is remove the true and false, and we're just saying, well, if this matches it, then yeah, that's great. We're already ret re returning true. So let's move on to our next tip. I have to get through this quickly because we don't have too much time for these. Tip number two is to do with string interpolation. So if you come from the Excel word world, you're probably using ampersands to um, bring strings together to concatenate them. Um, you don't have to do that because if you're using ampersands and quotations, it can get quite messy. What you can do instead is you can prefix your string with a dollar symbol, and then you can put your PowerFX code, so it could be variables or it could be conditions inside of curly brackets, and then it looks cleaner, it's more concise as well. So yeah, the name is Sexton, Charles Sexton. Tip number three, so James Bond is in MI6, but why is he looking up for no reason? So let's have a look into this one. So here we have a local variable on our screen, and we've got the name of James Bond from that. And what we're doing after that is we're checking what his agency is that he belongs to. So it's a dataverse table. But what we're doing here is we're performing a lookup for that agency based on that variable of the agent James Bond that we've got. But we don't really need to do that lookup because we already have it. We can just reference that relationship. So the agent, which is James Bond dot agency, that's the agency that belongs to him, and then the name of it. So it's much cleaner and we're not performing that request to the database, which is really important. Tip number, th uh, number four, sorry, is um, all to do with blanks. So let's say we have a drop down here and we've got just one option in it, James Bond. And we want to set the default for that. And we want to say that if we can find an agent called Charles Sexton, then let's return him. Otherwise, let's return a blank. And the way that it works in the PowerFX code is we're typically looking at if it's blank first. So if we don't have this particular person as an agent, then we return a blank. Otherwise, we would return the agent. But we don't even need to return the blank. We can just prefix it with a not or an exclamation mark to say, if it's not blank, then let's return it. Otherwise, we don't have to do anything. It's just much cleaner. Tip number five, referring to myself. So um, yeah, let's have a look at this. We've got a label here that says, I'm not normal. And um, if I change it to say bold, it changes to, but I am bold. And the logic behind that is essentially we're looking at the font weight for this particular control. And if it's normal, we're presenting I'm not normal. Otherwise we're pressing, but I am bold. So we're using the font weight from the control, but we don't need to reference the control like this because it's referring to itself. What we can do is instead of that, we can just put self. And it's much cleaner, it's much clearer to the developer that, okay, we're referring to the control we're within. It's much better. 
Tip number six. So filters here. We have a gallery. We've got some very special agents in there. James Bond, of course, Miss Moneypenny, David Warner II, version 2.0, and Shane, who is, of course, forever young. And what we can do here is we can search and filter um, through the agency, for example, and we can also um, search for the name as well. This all works fine. No problem with it. So the end user is going to be happy with it. But what's the developer experience like? If we look at the code that we're using to filter it, what we can see here is that we're checking if we've got some kind of search text. And if we have, then we're performing the search. But within our search, within where we're looking at our data source, we're um, reducing that according to whether an agency has been selected or not. And if an agency has been selected, then we're returning the filtered list. Otherwise, we return all of the agents. But then if we're not searching, we do that filter yet again. So we're doing it twice, and that's not very nice. What we can do instead is, if I just comment out that code. So what we can do instead is we can put all of it inside of one filter statement or one filter function. So within here, we're checking, are we searching? If we are, then we search, otherwise we don't. And then we've got our filter in one line here. So we're basically saying if they've selected all, then it's true, return everything. But if it's not, or then reduce it down to the agency that's selected. And it means that if we have more filter statements, we can just put in extra lines for every single one. It's much cleaner, much easier. On to tip number 007. Um, so here we have the name is Bond. Uh, sorry, the name Bond contains four letters. So we're referring to the name of Bond. And the way that we're getting it is we're looking up the first agent in MI6. We're grabbing their surname. And then we're looking them up again, and we're checking the length of the surname. And that's a lot of stuff that we're doing. And what you'll notice is that we're using the surname twice, which is a bit of a waste, really, isn't it? So what we can do instead is we can use the with function, which is a great function for when you need to use something repetitively. So it might be that you have a complex calculation. You can put that into a temporary variable inside your with function, and then you can use it. So with now contains bond, and then we can very simply put out the name bond contains however many letters. And it also means that whatever variable you have in here is contained within the function. So you're not going to be leaking that outside of that function. So it's very important. And um, on to the next one, keyboard shortcuts. And I would just like to set something up quickly so that you can actually see the keyboard shortcuts, if I can. Just bear with me one second. OK, hopefully this works. So yeah, keyboard shortcuts. Um, the QR code there will take you to my blog post for keyboard shortcuts, but David's also going to share that. Um, if we're looking at wanting to move a control up or down, for example, let's say that we want to move our container up or down here, we can hold down control and left bracket, and it will move it up, or right bracket, and it will move it down. Um, we can do control shift and left square bracket or right square bracket to move it all the way up or all the way down. And those ones are quite commonly known, I think. One of the ones that I really enjoy are the ones where you're actually working with your Parafix code. So let's say that we wanted to change the key and we want to change it a couple of times. If we hold down control and D, then we can select the next occurrence as many as we want to. But for this, maybe we want to select all of them. So Control, Shift, and L, and we've selected all of them, and we can change that to whatever we want. So it's nice and quick and easy. It helps me a lot. Moving lines up and down is also quite useful. So you'll find that you need that sometimes. That's with Alt and up and down. And then you can do Alt, Shift, and up or down, and you can copy the line up or down, which is also very handy. And there we go. Those are all of my tips. Thank you very much. Thank you.